Time now for Media Watch with James Creedon. Good evening, James. Hi, Delano. You've been looking at the fear factors surrounding the coronavirus. Well, I suppose wall-to-wall -wall coverage of it. Um, so the fear is there. Uh, whether it's proportionate to the risk or not is another factor. But just to take a look at how it's been covered on social media, this is one screen grab that went online. This is what people are getting on their on their smartphones, on their tablets, various news alerts. Uh, Hope and fear within two simultaneous push alerts. New York Times talking about the Center for Disease Control in the US warning to begin preparing for the possibility of an outbreak. This might be bad. The Economist then tempering things a little bit, saying, look, in China, it might be slowing yeah. down. But, you know, when you get two news alerts about the same kind of slightly scary news story, one after the other, it's kind of a little bit uh, scary. Anyway, you have others taking to social media, such as Dr. Uh, Denna Grayson, she uh, is a Democrat who formerly ran for the Senate, uh, a doctor, uh, a PhD also in uh, various aspects of biochemistry. The World Health Organization has long worried that a mysterious disease X could spark an international contagion. The coronavirus is rapidly becoming the first true pandemic challenge that fits the disease X category. So even if WHO was saying we're not talking about pandemic anymore, you've got experts really taking to social media talking about this and not necessarily in a very reassuring way. She also took to social media with this message saying what you can do to prepare. So even if the US has not really been hit that badly, uh, you, you've got people with authority taking to social media saying, don't touch your face, don't shake anybody's hands, stock up on prescription meds. It, it, it's, 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 it's clear to see why people might uh, really be quite afraid at this point. Don't touch your face. Don't we touch our face like a thousand times a day? Like something uh, that's ridiculously right. high, right? And certainly across the entire uh, of the United States of America, I think I would think that might be taking things a little bit too far. Images coming then, at, you know, be, coming in then from Tenerife, one of the latest uh, places to be affected. This was on Sky News earlier today, showing people in lockdown in a hotel. So really, no matter no matter what country you find yourself in, you can't escape uh, the, the, the kind of fear factor of all of this. This is a, a map of the airspace over Italy. People saying hundreds of flights continue to enter and leave Italy uh, 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 as it becomes a new hotbed for the virus. So a real fear factor is that in the age of globalisation with flights and whatnot and open borders, that this could continue to spread. The borders still remain open with Italy um, for now. Now, some in Italy are a little less concerned. This uh, has uh, gone up on YouTube and uh, had uh, tens of thousands of hits. I think it's quite, uh, it's quite funny in the context of the fear. Uh, let's just take a listen to this gentleman and his take on things. So you, you can see here that he's, he's basically panicked about, uh, about the fact that... Um, There's no pasta. Yes. There's no pasta, indeed. Uh, so there you go. Uh, he, he's, he's taking things in, in his stride, I suppose you could say. Uh, this is what the line to buy face masks at a South Korean supermarket looks like. Um, that's another video uh, that came in. Uh, and, and I suppose, you know, the fear factor has results such as this. People just queuing around the block. That's a video that was taken, I think, yesterday in Daegu in South Korea. So speaking of fear factor. And then you've got all of these charts showing that uh, the coronavirus is, is progressing at a much more rapid rate than swine flu, Ebola and what not. Uh, this is a, a map from uh, Johns Hopkins University. Yeah. Also not very, you know, it just even the, the colour coding, uh, it just makes the thing look horrific. But I suppose this is what mapping does. It just tells you the extent to which and where uh, the disease is spreading. And through. now many feel that the authorities in the United States should be taking things more seriously. Well, speaking of that interactive map, here you have the Acting Deputy Secretary, Ken Cuccinelli. He is a Deputy Secretary of the DHS, Department of Homeland Security, and a member of Trump's Coronavirus Task Force. And he, yeah. he tweeted a link to that map. And he said, has, has anyone stopped, has it stopped working for other people or is it just me? Which doesn't make him really sound very professional or on top, or on top of things. Then you had uh, Donald Trump himself saying that we're very close to a vaccine. Uh, people presumed he meant the coronavirus, but he was actually talking about Ebola. Uh, and experts say that a coronavirus vaccine is at least a year away. So these sort of uh, declarations by, um, you know, authority figures are not really reassuring anybody. Indeed. This is a video from Iran also showing, I suppose, the extent to which people are a little bit concerned about, uh, uh, about uh, contaminating. I wonder have they been um, looking at, it seems to have got stuck there, that particular video, but what, what it does show, if it were to play, would be people um, actually shaking feet and not 
hands. Yeah, our correspondent said our, they, no handshakes, just uh, fist bumps, in fact. Right, there you go. So I think there is quite a degree of, uh, and I suppose understandably given that the amount of uh, figures. Then there was this rather extraordinary footage, which uh, yeah. I'm sure has been playing in news bulletins as well, uh, of uh, Iraj Harichi, the Deputy Health Minister, trying to reassure everybody that uh, things are going to be OK, that there's no cover-up, and he was sweating profusely because he himself had contracted the coronavirus, which is hardly... Uh, reassuring. Indeed. Oddest headline of the day, uh, this is in the New Arab and this was from an Iranian cleric, he's saying apply essential oils to your rear end and this cur uh, cures of coronavirus. He also says uh, Western medicine is un-Islamic. So all of that I suppose if you were in Iran, you wouldn't be terribly reassured really, would you? Indeed. Now you have some cartoons to finish us off. Yes, they're probably not funny. but Coronavirus um, cartoons? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> they, they do exist. It's a whole new genre. This is in Iran as well and I suppose it kind of uh, referring to the cover-up or the, this is, you know, the, 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 the accusations of cover-up and uh, the virus I suppose being unveiled uh, there. That is by Iranian cartoonist Atuka Neastani. Um, this this is another cartoon by Yete Su, I suppose the fear that the genie is out of the bottle and I'll finish with this uh, in the London Evening Standard by Christian Adams, I suppose the concern that we're reaching a tipping point with the virus. Thank you very much for that James. Thanks, James Creedon there with Media Watch.